I'm continuing my look at games by the world champion Michal Tal. And this game was played in a tournament in Russia, in Dubna, in 1973. And his opponent is a Russian, uh, Igor Platonov, who has decided to play the poison pawn variation of the Nidorf uh, Tal with white here. Well, that's the kind of variation that I'm sure Tal was very pleased to see. It suits his uh, open style and, of course, lots of tactics there. Um, Tal doesn't go for rook b1 here, which is the most popular move, but instead plays knight b3, which is more of a sideline. Famously, uh, Spassky used this to defeat Fischer in their uh, match in Reykjavik in 1972. But, I mean, actually, theoretically, it doesn't have such a brilliant reputation. Anyway, let's uh, go on with the game. I don't want to spend too long over these um, uh, the opening, uh, but just to say that black should be okay here, although it looks absolutely terrifying. Uh, so Tyler's played the bishop about h5, and of course this discourages black from castling queenside because the f7 pawn is on prees. Um, but Tal building up in standard way with uh, rook f3, and, and this looks absolutely terrifying for black. Excuse me a second. Because white is building up on the king side, um, and the queen is absolutely miles away, so you know, this is really dangerous. However, there is a good reason why the poison pawn variation is playable, and that is that the fact that the b2 pawn has disappeared, and positionally this makes it difficult for white on the queen side because this knight isn't well protected, which means that the c2 pawn is also vulnerable. Um, well, OK, what's this got to do with the fact that black's king is under extreme fire? Well, take a look. Um, black actually plays this at least this part of the game extremely well. Um, not panicking on the king's side, but starting to build his counterplay on the queen's side. So Tal doing all the normal stuff and you know, looks, looks very frightening. But watch how black actually plays extremely calmly. Now, this is what I'm talking about. This is where black's counterplay is developing. And you'll notice that just for a moment, white's king is a little bit exposed. So, you know, Tal nudges that one in the corner. It means, you know, there's always perhaps a saving check there. And now, again, an excellent defensive, or I should say counter-attacking move from black, opening up the bishop's diagonal. But also, this means that with the diagonal open, black is more likely to be able to bring the queen back to defend, um, well, not on this square, but along the dark squares on this diagonal. So f5, excellent move, just improving communication between the queen side and the king side. Tal takes the pawn, and now queen b4, so you can see straight away a threat to take the knight. So black playing excellent this this moment. Now, how do you proceed with white? Not so easy. Um, I, mean, I suppose the obvious move is to play the rook up to the third rank to protect the knight. But then after e takes f5, in fact, white's attack is kind of grinding to a halt. Um, for example, if, well, the obvious move is to play rook g3 to you know, try and create some threats here. But just rook e8, a very calm move. And this will allow the king to step out of the way to f8. That's one idea. But also, you can see that there is a huge drawback to bring the rooks up to the third rank. Is that the first rank becomes exposed, and white's king is in danger here. And with no really clear attacking continuation, it's... Uh, well, I think black is taking over the initiative now, basically. So, Tal, what did he do? He played an excellent move. Now, my computer tells me that, objectively, this is simply a losing move, but this is by far the most dangerous move, and this is the difference between human chess and computer chess. Someone like Tal had an unerring instinct for moves that were highly unpleasant for his opponent to meet. So he first of all gives up 
one pawn and then plays f5. Now compared to the variation we've just looked at, you can see that the queen's diagonal to the king's side has been opened. So it's all about communication. And now here, well, again, my computer tells me that if black is very cool and simply takes this pawn here, then this is the best defense and then there's no clear way forward for white. Well, in a game, that's not easy to see. I should also mention that if bishop takes knight, well, we can see the effect of the queen's right away. Queen check. Now, obviously, bishop g7 would be met by f6 and checkmate. And if the king goes in the corner, again, a very obvious move. Um, and when this is taken, then white just has blasted his way through to the h-pawn, and you can see the queen is miles offside. Um, but as I said, e takes f5 is probably, um, well, it is defending, but not easy to see in an actual game. Instead, black took this knight, which is such a tempting move. Um, there appears to be no reason why you shouldn't take this knight. Also, particularly, as apart from being material ahead, it looks as though you're going to exchange off this strong attacking piece. Okay, let's see what Tal did. Um, rook g3 check. Now, black is still okay in this position, and I'm going to leave it to you. If you were playing with the black pieces here, what would you play? How would you defend? Um, while you're thinking about that, I'm, I'm going to show you the, a few books on Tal, actually, that I've been looking over again over the past few days in, in putting together these, these games. Um, well, all these books are, are really great, really enjoyable to read. First of all, let me show you this one, The Magic of Michal Tal by Joe Gallagher. And this concentrates on Tal's later years. Um, and, well, Joe Gallagher, English Grandmaster, a great attacking player himself, and he this is really a labour of love. He, he, he clearly really enjoyed annotating these games. And Joe is a really good writer as well. So, so that's a very enjoyable one, Magic of Michael Tal. Um, this is a book on the Tal Botvinnik World Championship match written by Tal himself. So these are fantastic annotations. As you can see, I'm afraid I've had this a long time. It's completely falling apart. I love reading it. Uh, it's a great read. Tal is very entertaining. Um, for German, uh, German speakers, then I would recommend Carsten Müller and Raymond Stolz's book Zaubern wie Schachweltmeister Michael Tal. Um, as everything that Carsten does, Carsten Müller does, it's very detailed, um, but very enjoyable, I have to say. Um, and probably my favourite book, The Life and Games of Michael Tal, which was published by Everyman and written by Tal himself. Fantastic annotations. He He's a good storyteller. He's very witty and also a very modest man, actually. Um, that's my favourite of the lot. OK, back to this game. What should black play? Well, the best move is... Bishop g7. Now you can only uh, get through this position by exact calculation. Um, the problem is, well, first of all, I should say that white has a, an easy draw straight away just by doing this. So that's a draw by perpetual check. White doesn't have anything better. f6 looks absolutely terrifying. Now, of course, if the rook here is taken, then you can take the queen. That's no good for black. But there is a saving move for black in this position, an extraordinary move. Uh, if you found this, very well done. Rook f3. Brilliant. So if queen takes queen, then rook takes rook and mate. And, well, white can try various things. Um, rook takes bishop, king goes in the corner. Black's king is actually safe here. So white has to deal with this threat. So the queen comes back, and now rook takes f6. And this position is, well, roughly level. I would slightly prefer black, actually, once uh, this bishop comes into play in a counter-attack style, so, but white is okay. So, just coming back to this position, bishop g7 is the best move. 
Okay, so why not? Oh, first of all, I should say also that rook takes rook, of course, is not good because of queen takes and white should win that. But in the game, Platonov played king h8, which looks like a highly plausible move, but he'd overlooked something. Queen h6, and after this, black resigned. Okay, why did he resign? Well, there are two different checkmates uh, threatened. That's not a bad start. But I, I can only assume that Platonov had thought that this was a saving move. Well, if, if white takes the bishop, then yes, black is winning. He's a rook up. Or if white takes the rook, then black is also winning after this move. But there is a crafty little move that Tal had foreseen. Bishop g6. And after that, there really is no defence. So threat, queen takes pawn. Threat also, queen takes rook. And the problem is that after... Well, this only prolongs the agony. That's, that's again, two different mates threatened. But after black plays pawn takes, then... The g-file has been blocked, and that is checkmating one move. So that is the really cool move, bishop g6, that Platonov obviously overlooked. Absolutely brilliant. Tal once said, you must take your opponent into a deep, dark forest where 2 plus 2 equals 5, and the path leading out is only wide enough for 1. Tal was the one out of the deep, dark forest in that case. Beautiful game.